In today's video, I'm gonna focus on the state of ray tracing in games and see if this technology now makes sense. The first ray tracing GPUs were the 2000 series from Nvidia, released in the second half of 2018, so a bit more than 6 years ago. Let's see in today's games, after 6 years, the benefits of ray tracing. Before we move forward, let me explain what is ray tracing. Ray tracing is a rendering technique that can realistically simulate the lightning of a scene and its objects by rendering physically accurate reflections, refractions, shadows and indirect lightning. So this is the technique that doesn't make the game look better, just more realistic, at least when it comes to lighting and everything related to that. Just look at Quake 2 RTX. The developers can add the best ray tracing effects, but without a complete update to the game's geometry and texture, the game still looks three decades old, regardless of how accurate the lighting is and how lifelike the reflections look. When we move to modern games, the difference can be hardly seen though. You really need to pay attention to it in order to notice the differences. Just look at this Alan Wake 2 scene. Look at a shadow that the satellite dish casts on the side of the house. With path tracing enabled, the shadow looks real, as opposed to when it's disabled. To those that don't know, path tracing is an advanced ray tracing technique used to create graphics that are indistinguishable from reality. But while playing the game, we take it for granted, as that is not the main area we focus on. In my opinion, these minor details can go unnoticed and with a lot of work the same can be achieved through pure raster, without the need of ray tracing. What is noticeable though is the performance loss. Let's look at Black Myth Wukong next. This is another game that makes use of ray tracing when enabled, path tracing to be more precise when set to high. However, this game can do softer ray tracing when disabling full ray tracing in the graphic settings by using Unreal Engine 5's Lumen. So, all lighting in the game are still ray traced, but with the setting disabled, it doesn't require any dedicated hardware to do so. As you can see on the screen, the shadow quality is lower, as probably the performance loss would have been too much if there was no visual difference. It seems that having hardware capable accelerating the ray tracing effects has benefits after all. Now, there is another point that I want to make. As said before, ray tracing casts lights, shadows and reflection in a realistic way, but sometimes, to some, this may not look better than when no ray tracing is used in the scene. Let's have a look at this Cyberpunk 2077 scene. To me, the best looks with RT disabled altogether. I think that path tracing makes the current scene too bright and when using only standard ray tracing it makes it a bit darker, but I like it when ray tracing is disabled. To me it makes the road not so reflective and bright, so to say, a bit more real and the scene a bit more darker. I know that by disabling ray tracing the scene is not realistic, but this is how I imagine it in my head. Sometimes we humans like paintings or images that are not realistic and exaggerate or alter the surroundings. Path tracing breaks that mold, as it casts shadows, lights, reflection, refraction as close to reality as it can be. Let me know in the comments below which scene do you prefer the most. Another point to make against path tracing or ray tracing to a lesser extent is the performance drop. The majority of us have high refresh rate screens and we wish to play games at high frame rates. With the current hardware available, this is not possible. The performance loss is substantial, especially with path tracing. The currently available GPUs have dedicated parts of the die area to ray tracing hardware, but not the majority, as raster is still king. And this is why we have such a big performance loss. Who knows, maybe the performance loss was minimal if most of the GPU's die area is dedicated to ray tracing. Enabling ray tracing also increases a bit the memory requirements of a game. So to whom does ray tracing bring the most benefits? Believe it or not, the most benefits apply to game developers. This technique helps in creating realistic shadows, reflections and also lowers the time to achieve this as opposed to traditional lighting. 
In other words, as long as the engine supports ray tracing, the effort needed to do proper lightning is significantly reduced. Path tracing is the future. Hopefully, future hardware will be more capable when using ray tracing in games and the performance loss will be less painful as games will slowly adopt it. But in order for games to look better, we do need proper high quality texture, as this is the main thing that makes games visually appealing. High quality texture will require more VRAM than the average GPU has nowadays. Adding ray tracing to the mix will make the game look a bit more realistic, a notch more VRAM hungry, but nothing more. The most important thing to understand is that ray tracing will not save a game from looking bad or be a, a bad one. Ray tracing will not make games be successful. To me, if I play a lot of games using ray tracing and I go back to another game that doesn't use it, I start to notice shadows not being cast properly, but I adjust quickly to what the game looks like, if it is a good one. And that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below, do you think that if the next generation of GPUs bring a substantial performance increase in ray tracing scenarios, will you care more about this technology? If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment below and subscribe to the channel. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.